I got an email recently from one of our Genealogy Gems premium members named Nancy, and she says, can you help me understand why I would need Evernote and Snagit? I have both installed on my computer, but I need to spend time becoming proficient in both. If they duplicate one another, wouldn't want to spend time learning both if Snagit is superior. Well, this is a really smart question because uh, like the saying goes, if time is money, in the case of genealogy, time is ancestors. And no one wants to spend more time learning yet another tech tool if they really don't need to. So let's look at Evernote versus Snagit in a head-to-head -head comparison and dig into their strengths and their weaknesses. If you have both, this is going to help you also decide which one to use in any given circumstance. I think the logical place for us to start in our comparison is in what they do. So Evernote is a cloud-based note-taking tool, and it includes a web clipper. A web clipper just means when you go to a website and you see some information you want or an article or an image, you can use the clipper using your mouse to grab just that piece of what appears on the screen. Well, Snagit is a screen capture kind of AKA web clipper tool. So first and foremost, that's the thing that they have in common. They both capture all or a portion of the content that appears on your computer screen. You can clip exactly what you want and you can save it as an image for future reference or use. So that's a pretty simplified description, but essentially web clipping is the common denominator. From there though, they diverge in what they do. So in addition to web clipping, Evernote is primarily a note-taking tool. It takes all kinds of notes. It can record audio. You can take a photograph or drop a photograph into a note. Uh, you can also drop a video into it. Uh, you can add documents to notes and PDFs. Uh, you can, of course, clip anything on the web using the web clipper of Evernote. You can even just type up your notes or even create handwritten notes. So all these kinds of notes are added to Evernote. And you can work in Evernote as kind of a workstation where you can organize and you can search for your notes and retrieve them really quickly. It also can apply OCR, optical character recognition. And what that does is it makes your screen captured notes or any text that appears in let's say a photograph that you took, and it can turn them into keyword searchable text. So that means you can search for notes regardless of what's in the title of the note or what you might have typed into it. If text appears on the image, it can find that too. And Evernote allows you to instantly access your notes from any device that you have that you're signed into your Evernote account. So that could be your laptop, your desktop, or your mobile device. Snagit is primarily a screen capture tool. In fact, it's kind of a screen capture tool on steroids compared to Evernote. It, it's not really a place to store notes, although you can store and kind of keep them organized within the library, but it's really a fantastic web clip tool and it allows you to edit that information. You can do lots of annotations, uh, manipulate it in so many different ways. You can also save those uh, clippings and whether it's images or video and use that stuff in other programs. And we're going to talk more about that in just a moment. Snagit can capture both images and video of content on the web, and it can do other things like use OCR to actually convert the text that appears in that web content image that you've created and turn it into editable text. Not just make it searchable, but make it so that you can actually edit it. It's typed up for you. When you web clip with Snagit, you're also creating an image and you can create pretty high resolution images, unlike Evernote. And that image has gotta be saved to a cloud service, something like Dropbox, in order to be able to access that image or that note, if you will, from all of your devices. Remember we mentioned that Evernote gets installed on each of your devices, whether it's software on your computer or an app from the app store on your mobile device, but Snagit sits just on your computer and that's where you do most of your web clipping. 
So in order to share those images out to your mobile devices, you're just going to want to save them to a cloud service like Dropbox. Now, if you want to learn a lot more about what both of these programs do, check out my other videos. I've got Evernote for beginners and also Snagit for beginners. And over at the Genealogy Gems website on the videos page under technology, you're going to find a lot more classes. I teach a lot of classes, uh, mostly specifically on how to use these tools for genealogy. So check those out. Another thing that Evernote and Snagit have in common is they're both software programs. So let's talk about Evernote. In addition to being able to use it as a software program on your computer, you can also go to your app store on your mobile device and download the Evernote app. You can also use it on any computer by simply going to evernote.com and signing into your account. Now that being said, really the software is the preferred method for using Evernote. Um, it's a lot faster than if you were trying to use it on the website. Uh, but it also works very quickly on your mobile devices. As far as cost goes, there is a free trial available. It has limitations. You can only use it on two devices. Um, it also has some restrictions on storage, which we're going to talk about in a second. And it's purchased as a subscription. So you could pay about, right now it's about $9 a month if you want to do monthly, but typically if you're going to be using Evernote long term, you're going to want to get a yearly subscription. And that runs right now around $80 a year, which is about six, almost $6.70 per month. So pretty affordable, but it is an ongoing subscription in order to keep creating new notes. But the good news is that if you do decide to subscribe, you can use Evernote for a lot more than just genealogy. In fact, both of these programs are great for so many different uses. Okay, now let's talk about Snagit. Snagit is also software. In fact, it's exclusively software that you download to your computer. You can buy it as a standalone purchase, or you can also purchase an ongoing maintenance subscription which provides you with upgrades and, and extra service. Uh, there is not a mobile app for Snagit, so that's an important thing to know. Although you can screenshot anything on your phone or your tablet and uh, just send it over to your computer, perhaps save it to Dropbox, and then you can grab it in Snagit and you can work with it from there. The cost is about $64 right now for a one software license and a one-year maintenance agreement. And that gives you a one-year free upgrade. But you don't have to pay for ongoing maintenance. So if you just wanna buy it one time, download it and just use that version, you can do that. And then later, several years down the road, if you want to, you could elect to upgrade it if you want to. So in conclusion, unless the free version of Evernote is adequate for your needs, Snagit is much more economical. So it takes about, 10 months of Evernote ongoing subscription to cover the cost of the one-time purchase of Snagit. But if you need all the features of Evernote that go beyond what Snagit can do, then of course the yearly subscription is the most economical way to purchase Evernote. Our next comparison is storage and retention. And because Evernote is a subscription, this really often brings up the question of whether or not you can use the, your notes that you create after you stop subscribing. And storage limits, of course, are also a concern. So when it comes to Snagit, there are no storage limits. So that's really good. All the content that you're capturing is stored on your own local computer, not the cloud. And it's yours forever. So there's no limit on how much you can clip or create using Snagit. Evernote does store your notes on your computer, uh, but it also stores it on the Evernote cloud when you're connected to the internet, which is how you can do the sharing between devices. So while Evernote doesn't have an overall storage limit, it does have limits on how much you can create each month. Each note is a particular size, and of course that goes towards your total limit on how much you can create each month. Now there is a free version, as we mentioned, that allows you about 60 megabytes of monthly uploads or creation of notes. So this is talking about the, the overall size of your notes. If you add a photograph to Evernote, you're gonna use up that 60 megabytes really quickly. Photographs tend to be pretty large files. 
There's also a 25 megabyte maximum note size. So, so a lot of your photographs might not even be allowed to be brought in because they might be larger than 25 megabytes. So no note or clipping can be over 25 megabytes in size. But with the subscription, whether you do the monthly or whether you do the yearly, you get 10 gigabytes of monthly uploads or creation of notes. So that's pretty hard to max out. I don't know that you would ever really max that out. Uh, and the note size limit is 200 megabytes. So again, there you're pretty safe. So what all this means is that you're gonna need a yearly subscription to really be able to use Evernote for genealogy or any major projects. And while there are limits, you're not likely actually to reach them. Uh, and you can use it offline because of course the notes are also saved on your computer. Snagit has no limits. It stores only on your computer unless you share that content to other sources. So let's talk about exporting content. A necessity for an ongoing subscription to Evernote brings up the next most important comparison, which is how can you export and use your web clippings? And in the case of Evernote, the other types of notes that you're creating. Well, the truth is in Evernote, it's not that easy. You can export your notes as the Evernote file format. It's called ENEX, or you can export them as HTML. Now, HTML is used in creating web pages. So neither one of those is really user-friendly. Keep in mind that web clippings are image files, and we normally need our images to be either JPEG or PNG in format because that's how we can use them in other programs. Uh, another program that you might want to use your, your clipping in is probably not going to support an ENEX or work very friendly with HTML. With Snagit, it's really easy. You can export your clippings in countless ways. Pretty much all the major file types are supported and you can easily add content directly to a large number of programs. Uh, programs like Word, PowerPoint, and you can even send them to Evernote. So if you're writing a family history story or a book, or you wanna clip something on the web and include it in a project, Snagit can send it right to your document with one click and it's usable. So the conclusion in this area is if you need to be able to easily get web clippings and captured content out of the program and use it in other ways and other projects, you snag it. If you wanna keep your clippings and all your notes in one place and be able to keep them organized and be able to find them very quickly, then you wanna use Evernote. When it comes to sharing content with other researchers or maybe other family members, both Evernote and Snagit do a great job kind of in their own way. So with Evernote, each note has a really convenient little share button that allows you to invite other people to view just that note. And it also gives you a unique link to that note so that you can share it in other ways as well. And you can email your notes. Uh, you could also put a group of notes into a notebook and then share the entire notebook with another researcher. You can control whether or not the person that you're sharing with can just view the notes or whether they can actually edit them. So it really does facilitate collaboration by allowing you both to edit the same notes. That all being said, Evernote is really a tool for you and your projects and your work. Uh, it's not a priority or a real focus of Evernote to facilitate publishing the stuff that you're collecting in other ways through other programs. With Snagit, if you wanna share with someone else to collaborate, you're gonna to need to send it to them, uh, either by email or you can also save it to a shared cloud storage program. Uh, then they could edit it and they could do that in their own Snagit program or some other program and then they could resave it to that storage place and then you'd have access to it. So it doesn't really offer the ability to collaborate quite as easily as Evernote does. But Snagit's sharing and publishing capability is one of its greatest strengths. Just click share in the menu and you're gonna have the ability to save that content 
uh, as a file to your computer. You could email it to somebody else. You could upload it to your own website automatically. Uh, you could send it to your printer to print it out. There's a wide range of software programs that it supports. And of course, you could send it to a cloud storage service. And yes, you could even do everything you want to do with it in Snagit and then send it automatically over to Evernote. So what's my conclusion when it comes to sharing? Well, if you want to share your notes with other people, both tools can do a good job. Although I think Evernote does kind of inch ahead because it really facilitates both people being able to edit that same note right within Evernote. And if you want to share your content for use in other programs, you want to publish it out, you want to send it automatically to uh, social media, Snagit is definitely your best choice. Okay, after our head-to-head -head comparison, I think we've really discovered that your selection between these two programs, Evernote and Snagit, really depends on the task at hand and what your goals are. You're going to want to use Evernote if you want to be able to keep all your notes and your work in one place organized and very searchable, create a wide variety of notes like recording audio, uh, you can add video, web clippings, PDFs, type notes, you want to be able to do any kind of medium. If you want to have OCR applied to each of your web clippings so that they become keyword searchable, if you want to collaborate with other people on your notes and allow them editing access, and you want to easily create notes on mobile right there in the program, then Evernote's really a great choice. You're going to want to use Snagit if you want to create high quality, high resolution web clippings and videos in universal, stable file formats that are exportable and shareable. If you want to be able to create web clippings of hard to capture content like a widescreen family tree uh, or information that appears farther down the page, it's not visible on your screen right now, but it's on that web page, Snagit can do that. If you want to be able to manipulate the content that you're grabbing and annotate it or drop it into project templates, create all kinds of other things with it, uh, or if you want to easily export your captured content and use them in a variety of programs, Snagit is definitely the choice for you. And best of all, if you don't want to pay an ongoing subscription, you can just buy Snagit one time. Another way to look at it is that Evernote is more of a final destination for content that you're collecting and working with. And Snagit is a content collector that makes it easy to use that content wherever you want. I like to use them both in combination. Uh, I keep my genealogy and uh, other notes organized in Evernote, and then I use Snagit to capture web content exactly the way I want it, and then I can send it over to Evernote as needed. And I use both programs for a whole lot more than genealogy. I clip recipes, projects, ideas, and I use Snagit specifically to create all the images that you see on genealogy gems. So I'd love to know, how do you use Evernote and Snagit? And did you find this helpful? Have you made a choice? Or are you going to use them both and have them work together to do everything you need them to do? I'd love to hear. Put a note down in the comments. And of course, thank you so much for visiting the Genealogy Gems YouTube channel. I hope that you'll click the subscribe button because I've got a lot more to help you successfully climb your family tree. Thank you so much for watching, my friend. I'll talk to you soon.